Okay, so today we're going to start working on the uh, propane conversion for my Predator generator. I uh, picked this generator up about two weeks ago. Uh, I wanted to get some runtime on it before I actually did the conversion. I still want to get around another four hours runtime on it. Uh, I've got about an hour on it, maybe another six hours before I actually uh, start running on propane. But I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, conversion kit on it now since uh, I have some time off work uh, with the weekend coming up. Uh, one thing to note, so I picked the battery up from last week. It was uh, kind of hard finding the right size battery for it. And even still, the battery is a little short for the application. So the, uh, the, the hold down that came with the generator won't work with it. Uh, so I got to do something to modify that. It's something I think uh, Predator should really look at, the way the hold down mounts are. Uh, the other thing to note is uh, when I hook the battery up, I promptly hook it up backwards and uh, blew the fuses for the starter. So I had to go out and buy uh, new 15 amp fuses and uh, to get those installed uh, so that I can run it. Uh, so that's done. Uh, so now we're at that part of the process where we can actually do the conversion. Okay, so more to come. Okay, so for those that don't know where to get to the fuses for the starter, uh, the ones that I blew up my battery up backwards, uh, so Predator uh, were, uh, had enough foresight to actually put labels on their fuses, which helped out quite a bit. Uh, so if you look right here, it says, the label right here says, this fuse will blow. Anyway, it's hard to get it in position so it can read, but it says this fuse will blow the battery hooked up backwards. So that helped out quite a bit. Just simply opening it up and uh, putting the fuse in. Your standard car type of uh, automotive type of fuse goes in there. So we'll get that changed out and then we'll be right back. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of all the parts that came in the kit. Uh, first, we have the motor snorkel itself. Uh, the snorkel is uh, goes between the carburetor and the air cleaner. Um, it replaces the gasket, uh, so that's a pretty quick, straightforward install. I did that on my other generator, and it took me 10 minutes, maybe, tops. Uh, the hardest part was mounting the regulator. Um, this thing right here has got to be mounted, um, and it plums into the motor snorkel. Uh, so this is a 22 horsepower engine on my generator, so I had to have a different uh, valve. Don't know the name of the valve, but I uh, actually talked with the folks at uh, US Carb and they explained that with the 22 horsepower uh, engine, you need to have this flow valve along with the uh, this one. So uh, we'll get those plumbed together. So the one thing that didn't come with the kit, I'm a little disappointed, I'm gonna have to go out and find it, is uh, uh, the elbow or the fitting because the way this connects it, this part and this part connects kind of like that uh, i'm going to look for 90 degrees so i can actually connect them like that and make more room for where i want to mount it on the generator came with all the all the hardware to mount the uh the regulator and uh the low block low block is kind of good right there. Um, so we'll get all that hooked up. And of course it came with plenty of instructions of how to hook everything up. So, um, alright, and we'll get started. So the first step is uh, removing the air cleaner. I've already taken the cover off the air cleaner. And then it's just a matter of getting the air cleaner out of the way. It's hard to do with one hand when I don't have a tripod. Now we need to move uh, these four screws, or one, two screws, uh, to get to the carburetor. Okay? So now we try it on, I'll pause, I'll be right back when I get that on. And I got these screws out. Now I'm going to unbolt these two. So we'll 
we go to unbolt it. Okay, so I have the air cleaner housing moved out of the way and the carburetor is exposed. So on this generator, I have to actually remove uh, this piece right here because of the motor snorkel has to go inside of the carburetor. The two tubes have to go inside the carburetor past the choke. It looks like it's held on by two eight millimeter bolts. One there and one. Uh, it's too dark, hard to see, but there's one down there too. So we'll see about getting those moved and then uh, Alrighty, so I uh, continue with disassembly. I uh, got uh, the bolts out on this side. However, on the other side, in there, let's see them. Uh, not quite enough room to get my wrench in there. This uh, choke plate right here is in the way. So, uh, I have to remove the choke plate. I already have the bolt loose over there. I have one more bolt on this side to loosen up, and then we'll get that out of the way. A lot more disassembly to get this uh, part than I'd want it, but we'll get it done. Okay, so I have all the bolts out, and uh, now it's just a matter of separating the uh, this part from the carburetor. And uh, there you see the choke in the carburetor. The motor snorkel, it goes just like that. Uh, with the tubes going past the choke. So the one thing that lights really horrible. One thing that you have to be acutely aware of is. You have to make sure that the tubes are fully inside and the choke will operate as normal. So I've already uh, actuated the choke, put the tubes in place and it works just fine. Can't hold the camera and get down with what I need to do so I'm just going to pause and uh, get it partially assembled then we'll pick it up. Okay? But that's pretty much the way it goes and then this part will go back on like that and it all bolts back together okay we are back okay so we ran into a small little problem a little interference problem uh, so when this goes together um, I'm trying to do this one-handed so it's not really easy to do I don't have a tripod anyway when this goes together the uh, snorkel itself is uh, is in between the carburetor and the uh, air filter air filter housing so it kind of goes on just like that now it's going to be really hard to zoom in but if you look right there you can see where the hose is riding on the uh, housing right here, right in this area right here and what that does is um creates a gap so the bolt goes through right there and tightens down. And what I don't want to do is torque it tight and cause something to either break or get cramped. And that will happen right there. So I think what I'm going to have to do is uh, get my Dremel out and uh, do a relief cut right around here to get that hole somewhere to rest without it being pinched between this part of the housing and the carburetor itself. Hmm. All right, we'll take care of that. With the bolt in, you can really see the gap that I'm talking about, but right there. And you can't get that tight because, again, the hose is riding right there, so. All right, so I uh, did the trimming. And as you can see, it's a nice flush fit right there now. Uh, before I had a gap that looked kind of like this because it was riding. But after I trimmed it off with a Dremel, nice flush, and that should seat and uh, pretty good now. So we'll go ahead and try to put it back together. Call it a night.
All right. All right, so uh, I have the carburetor back together. Uh, you can see the, uh, the snorkel is between the air filter housing and the carburetor. And, uh, no gaps, nice tight fit. So at this point, I'll put the choke uh, bracket back on. We'll put the air cleaner back on. Get that back on. Uh, put it back together. Uh, then we'll start up on gas, just make sure everything's working right. And uh, again, I want to run it for another several hours before I actually uh, run on propane. At that point, we'll uh, get the propane hooked up and tune it for propane.